I've talked a little bit about Fluent Community and I said that I wanted to do some more videos on it. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the different ways you can set up your login page. And they just recently added something that I requested. It makes it so much simpler to change your login and your sign up or registration pages for people. So let's take a look at what you get out of the box first. All right, so this is how I've set up my login page. Now, this graphic that's over here does not come with it. Uh, you just get something blank. You can set a background image. I got this as a stock photo because the colors kind of work with my brand for Suburbia Press. So this side, you can make your little call to action or whatever you want to do and put a background image. And then your users can come over here and just simply log in. If they don't have any kind of uh, login already, well, then there's a convenient thing here to sign up. And this is the default of what you get out of the box. So you can put in your name, email address, a username. Uh, so like, that's usually like maybe, uh, let's say a Twitter handle, you know, at so-and-so, that's how it'll show up there. Uh, password and retype your password. And then you can check a box and you can agree to the community agreement. And again, if you already have a login, you can go over here and log in. You know, just kind of toggle back and forth between this login for people who have accounts and the sign up for those who need an account. The problem with this is if you want to charge for people to get into your community. And this is where they made a change that I think really makes this so much simpler. Before, you had to go ahead and do a lot of custom work. And now it's, you're, there's still some custom work and I'm going to walk you through that, but it's much easier. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I'm inside of my portal and in the portal settings on the general tab. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you can see where your login registration URLs, they've got the default, which is what I just showed you. And it comes you know, predetermined with what your URLs are. You can use a custom login page, which means that you've got to go build those and then determine what's going to be your authentication URL, what's your default login URL. But what made it really simple was this little checkbox down here. Now I can put in what I want here, my own registration page. And all I have to do is save that. So here's how it, this changes. Okay, so I've gone to my regular login page and I don't have a login, so I want to sign up. Now when I click on this, well, what's happening is it's transferring me over to a WordPress page that I've built. It may seem like a simple thing, but it's so much easier to do this way, particularly if you like their standard login page. Now you can do whatever you want on this page. In this case, I created a form in Fluent Forms Pro. And if you notice down here, I've made it something that requires payment. So in other words, you still put in your first name, last name, email address, the username you want, your password. And you could also have them do a double entry on a password to confirm that. It's how you build the form. And then you can have the checkbox for agreeing to the terms of use, the privacy policy and the community agreement. And then here's your price. So we put that in, you click this, it'll go ahead and it'll charge them a payment. I checked with the folks at WP Managed Ninja just to make certain that I understood this because this was an important issue for me, is what happens if a payment fails and if somebody uh, enters a name that's already in there, what happens with that? So the first thing is Fluent Forms works where it does the payment first. In other words, if the payment fails, it will not try to create the user account which is good. You don't want somebody getting a user account created if the payment didn't work. Likewise, you also want to check to see if the user account already exists. And my concern there was, well, you don't want somebody to pay for something and then not get a user account. But that one's not as difficult because what it means when you don't get the user account that you wanted, it means it already exists. So you'll simply have to choose another one. So that's pretty common in the industry. Let's take a look at how I built this. So you can see I just built a page called register. I'm going to click over here to this little WordPress logo, and that'll take me back into my normal dashboard. I'll go over here to pages. And I built this page called register. So let's take a quick look at this from the edit window. All right, so there's a page name. I took out the default. I'm using a cadence for my theme, and I took out their default thing and just put in an H1 right here, a little bit of text. And then 
if they've already got an account, I give them the link to the standard login page. And then this is just the page we talked about. So let's go look at how that page looks in Fluent Forms. All right, so there's a couple things you wanna do here. Before you even get into this, first off, you wanna make certain that you have the latest version of Fluent Forms. I'd worked with this on an older version and you didn't see these payment fields. You had to actually go enable that. If you get the later version, I think that should show up. So you wanna to go to your settings and integrations. You wanna look at payment settings. And you're going to set this, in my case, United States dollars. You're going to do is like, is this for a product or service or is it a donation? And then this is the information you want them to put in. And you also want to look at configure integrations. And I've got an integration with my Fluent CRM, with my Fluent community. So I want to have that in there. And then this one is for a WordPress user integ integration. That's what's going to actually create the user account for me. And if I click on that one to edit, you can see, you know, it'll show you if do you want to register a user or update a user, you can build this form the way you need to. And then of course, there's your username, you can map your input fields from the form field and to whatever this uh, title is over here. If you want to have any other values in here, you can do that. And you can set the default role, you can see where it's editor, author, contributor or subscriber, of course, you know, for people signing up with a community, I'm put them at the lowest level that I can. Then you've got a few options, you know, to auto log in after a registration, send them an email notification. And if they already uh, exist in the database, in other words, the user is already there, you do not want to submit this. So that's how you make certain that they don't uh, create a duplicate or update an existing uh, user account. So let's go back to our editor. Now keep in mind, these are the settings for this particular form. If you haven't set up your payment settings first, you want to go over here to global settings. And again, then you'll go down to payment settings. And we're going to click on payment methods. So you can be in test mode or in live mode. Right now I'm in live mode. You can connect this with your Stripe account, which is basically logging into your Stripe account and accepting things. You can go this to this with uh, a number of services. So there's PayPal, Molly, Razorpay, Paystack, Square, Paddle. And then you can also do this test payment, which basically is just something that you can put in sandbox mode to see if you click the button, does it work the way you want to. So you'll want to make certain that you have your payment settings set up with at least one service. You can do more if you want to. I'm happy with Stripe, so leave it that way. So do that with global settings. Then that way, when you come over here to your subscription form, you can go ahead and connect that with your payment setting. So here's how this works. You've got various fields, your first name, last name, your email, the username that they want, uh, password field, and then there's payment and price. So let's take a look at what these fields actually are. If we look at the input fields, you can see there are name fields. That's what this is. There's an email field. I just drag and drop that over. So it's literally click, drag, and you can add a new field that way. The username is just a text uh, field. And then I'll map that over to what I want it to be. The password field is a specific password field. You can see that over here. And you've got different fields over here. So there's advanced, there's terms and conditions. That's what I'm using down here. And there are just so many different types of fields you can use in this form builder. Now this section over here is called payment item and this one is payment method. So let's go back and take a look at the payment stuff. So this is where you have payment item. And what you're doing here is you're describing what is it that they're getting in this case, you know, lifetime community subscription and how much does it cost? So I've put in $10, you know, and the label is just price. Is this required? No, because they're not filling in anything over here. The payment method, well, we can say a default value of uh, $5. If that's what you're going to do, you can do this at, let's make it match to say $10. And yeah, this is going to be required. So in other words, if they don't pay, they're not going to get anything. 
So that gives you a couple of options over here. Now, if we go back to our input fields, you can do this as a subscription. So in other words, what I did with the payment item was a one-time thing. Let's say that you're doing a subscription that comes over for each month, and maybe you wanna do it 9.99, that's the default for each month. You can just click on the little pencil icon, and then you can do this, and it will give you options to how often are you gonna build them, so it's, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, how much are you gonna charge them, and is there a sign-up fee, are there any trial days, and you leave it at zero, it just keeps on going. Again, this is something you probably wanna make required. So I am going to get rid of my subscription item, Yes, I'm sure. Now over here on the name field, do you see where it says this little red asterisk? It's probably difficult to see on the screen, but it's right there. Your required fields have this little red mark. And when I looked over here, I thought, why doesn't it have anything that says required for name and address? Well, if I click on email, yeah, there's a uh, required right there. You can also validate it, your emails, but I didn't see anything for first name or last name come over here to these little toggle switches and you open it up and you get more information for where that goes and that's where you can do a required name. So required first name, you'll come back down and if you've selected last name, then you can make certain that's required as well too. That one kind of threw me off for a little bit. It just wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to these little drop downs. So that's where if you're using Fluent Forms, then that's where the required field is for the names. Everything else, it seems to be pretty much right there on this. Now, the payment method, I believe, is only for the pro version. If you don't want to use Fluent Forms, maybe you're already using another tool, they have a plugin called Paymatic. The other thing is, you don't have to use Fluent Forms. You can use anything you want. If you're working with MailChimp or Kit.com and they have a landing page where you can make a payment, that's great. You can use that to accept the payment but then you have to get something to create the account. And that might be working with the tool like Zapier. In other words, when something happens on an external service, like Thrivecart is another example, then that has to integrate. You may be able to do that with a webhook, and that's something I haven't tried with this because I've got this integrated all on the same site. So if we look at settings and integrations, yeah, I'm gonna leave this because I don't wanna make any changes. There's a couple of other things I wanna look at. And if I go on, click integrations, we looked at this before, so user registration. This is what will go through and create the account inside of WordPress. So after they've paid, they've put in their username and it's passed the validation that it doesn't already exist. Then it will go ahead and start putting this stuff in here. So, and you kind of map the fields that you're gonna put in here. And email address is, is pretty easy. It knows email is email. Username, well, what is that going to be? I've got a field called username. First name and last name, again, are the inputs from the form. And the password is the input from my password field. I've got my default subscriber, and then we set all this. So that's how, if you're using Fluent Forms built in on the same WordPress installation as your community, you can go ahead and create the account right there. It is seamless to the user. And then once they get paid and signed up, then it takes them right into the community. So that is what I wanted to show you. And really the, the biggest part of it was just how easy it is to create a page. So let's go back to my pages. So I've embedded the form right here. It's really just a matter of adding a block for Fluent Forms, and then you select the form that you wanna use. You don't have to do just one form here you may want to do different things. You may want to let people sign up for a trial. You may want to let people sign up for different tiers. So maybe, you know, good, better, best, or, you know, bronze, silver, gold, or something like that. You could have this page show that kind of thing where you've got, you know, options for them to sign up. And the idea of doing that is the decision in their head changes from do I register or not to which level do I register for? So it's a subtle thing, and it doesn't guarantee that everybody's going to sign up for something, but it, it's better to kind of lure them into maybe signing up for a different tier than it does for just yes or no decision. And then those little blocks that you could put here 
would lead them to another page, which is the registration form where you put it in like this. So that way you've got different ideas of what you can put inside of your registration page. And all that was made available quite simply by the one little setting that we did right down here that made it so much easier to just check this box and use their existing login page and switch this over to your registration page. So that was what I wanted to show you for right now. Uh, my site is not set up yet completely. I am kind of going through it. Just to give you a quick look at it, we can go back over here. And I'm doing uh, all the basic things. I'm getting started over here. Give people a place to say hello. If they need customer support, I've got a fluent support. So the support ticketing system that will uh, allow people to put in a ticket if they've got a problem. I've got more things I'm putting in. So for example, pr promotional guidelines, sometimes people want to put in things to promote themselves or to put in links. So I've got a policy that I've put over here. And this is kind of what my policy is. I'll have a few more of these onboarding things. Then once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and open up this community for people to come in. Basically, my thought was first, it's hard to sell something where you don't have active users. So my thought was, I'm going to charge about $10 for lifetime access for people who start off this community when I announce that it's open. And that way you pay $10 once and you help build and shape what this is going to be. What is it going to be? Well, basically, I like to help people with WordPress, particularly small business entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out how do I do something in WordPress? I think we need a good community. And the reason that I want to do it as paid is for a couple of purposes. One, it keeps the bots out. In other words, you don't want robots coming up and just automatically logging in and then spamming inside of your group. So it keeps the bots out. Two, it makes people think before they sign up. There are some people who will go to a free community and they'll trash the place. If you look at Reddit, there are some of the groups there that are just absolutely a cesspool because they're not uh, moderated very well. I want to have a friendly community. And I think the people who pay a small fee are more likely to be serious about what they're doing and probably better behaved. And that's the idea behind it. Also, let's face it, I'm putting some work and effort into this. A small little stipend for access to it ought to be worth something, I would think. And there's a line in the from the Joker in The Dark Knight. If you're good at something, never do it for free. So that's the reason for the small fee. And people who sign up, they will have lifetime access as long as they remain a member in good standing. So in other words, if you don't leave and then come back, well, if you come back, there may be a different price. So if you start off with the $10 for lifetime access, you never have to pay for anything again. And let's say that when I change that, it goes to $5 a month. Well, if you had left the $10, then you pay $5 a month. And after two months, you start to pay more than you did when you were a lifetime member. If I ever raise that price from $5 a month to $10 a month, as an example, then if you had left and you come back, well, then you don't get back at the same price you had before. So as long as you're still a member, you keep the same price. It does not go up while you're a member. That's my thought on it. Anyways, if you've got a different thought on how pricing strategies ought to work, go ahead. I think that a good way to lose members is to change their pricing. I have access to some services where I signed up for a, a low fee for a year and they cost a lot more now, I'm still paying the same low fee. So I'm using that as a model for what I wanna do with my community. But this is gonna be for folks who want to work on their WordPress sites, know how to do things, to get in there and talk to each other about different ideas of how to do it. And it's not gonna be heavily moderated, but basically the rules are gonna be, you know, peace, love, and understanding. I don't want any fights, I don't want any problems, and I think the small fee uh, helps keep the riffraff out. So that's the idea. I hope this has helped you. I am going to do a few more videos on Fluent Community because as I'm setting this up, I'm having some fun with it. And I think that it might be something that could be good for you. If you've got questions about Fluent Community, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you again in the next video.